So the showrunner's insistence to push forward plot over characters means Siri and Geralt's dynamics were completely messed up. What about our third lead? Explaining what makes or breaks Yennefer as a character is not an easy thing to do. In fact, this might be the most difficult series of thoughts I've ever had to put into words. Because Yennefer is an inherently unlikable character. She was designed that way very explicitly by Sapkowski. As he puts it, when I created Yennefer's character, I wanted Geralt to fully grow, but then I decided to make things complicated. I created a female character who refuses to be a fantasy stereotype to please the reader. As a character, she is supposed to upset us, frustrate us, and anger us. The way Sapkowski wrote Yen, he presented her as difficult to like before peeling back the layers, recontextualizing her cold behavior in ways that gave her depth and made her relatable. And as a result of this, Sapkowski may have created my favorite character in all of fiction. So believe me, it's no small criticism when I say that the show did more damage to Yennefer's character than it did to any other. Not through any fault of Anya Charlotra's performance as an actor, but due to the abysmal writing and characterization she's given. But why is that? What changes could they have made that so fundamentally broke this character I adore? Well, to answer that, I think it's important to consider what the writers were attempting to do with her character, being as virtually any scenes involving her in the show are entirely original, either developing oblique references from the books or straight up inventing new material. The writers grant themselves an incredible amount of freedom when writing Yennefer and developing their interpretation of her, and I do believe it's important to judge that on its own merits rather than on the basis of how true it is to the books. So let's look at that. In the show, the root of her character arc is that she wants to be loved and have meaning. She wants a legacy. I'd say her overall goal is to, to find true connection and, um, and an unconditional love, which she's never experienced. I dreamed of becoming important to someone. But I've no legacy to leave behind. No family. And so we introduced the idea of a legacy in her world. She wants something to outlive her. And in her mind in this episode, it becomes a baby. That her understanding of love and self-worth are warped due to her upbringing. She sees herself as unfit to be loved. Feeling abandoned and hated by all of society, she becomes dispirited and lets herself get taken in by promises of beauty and power she'll gain by becoming a witch, as she sees it as her way to matter to others, to not be a victim again. She starts acting in accordance to what the magical community dictates she should. She compromises who she is by playing by Aratusa's rules, spying on her lover and accepting that the school she attends regularly prepares ritual sacrifices of young girls, all in an attempt to matter to others. As she sees it, everyone's trying to get something out of everyone else. My world is cruel <laughs> and predictable. You enter, you survive, you die. Thus, she wants to be powerful, she wants to be recognized and adored in control of others and never at their mercy, a shallow replacement for genuine love. Her sense of self-worth isn't based on her connection to others, it's shaped by her power and her ability to control her surroundings. I want to be powerful. Seen and adored with everyone watching. It is what I'm owed. No amount of power or beauty will ever make you feel worthy of either. But ultimately her desire for power doesn't fulfill her either. She finds being a court mage to be unsatisfying and regrets giving up her ability to have children for what amounted to very little. She didn't consider the consequences of her choice, being driven by her thirst for power and attention, and never realized the cost of going through with her transformation until it was too late. She thought a life of beauty and power would bring her the fulfillment of being loved, but she can tell it's all hollow. There's still a void in her soul that's unfilled. It's no coincidence the showrunners called their version of mana chaos. It's symbolic for her entire ordeal about how the more she gains in magical power, the less of a handle on life she actually has. So to try and be happy, she seeks love in all the wrong places. She wants a child who will love her and cement her memory, who would give her a sense of value. But it's a selfish motive, an evolution of her warped perception of love. And that twisted view of the world born of rage and frustration means Yennefer never sees how messed up her goals are, unable to see she is going about looking for love in all the wrong ways. Her plotline is essentially a metaphor for how society can force people into prefabricated roles they might not want, and that refusing to comply with those expectations can damage one's career unfairly. I went to a prized kingdom and did fuck all for decades, just as you taught us helped murderers and rapists keep their crown. Maybe it is time for something different. Pipe down. You, you don't get a vote. Yennefer was forced to play by Aratusa's rules, to become a caked up beauty at great cost to her personal life in order to even get a chance at becoming anyone. She had to become something men could gawk at just to be taken seriously by society. 
Yennefer never had an alternative to success. It angers her that men and rich kids don't have to jump through as many hoops as she did to be successful due to nepotism and deeply rooted prejudices against elves and people with disabilities. This is why she constantly bemoans her choice being taken away and seeks to get it back in the later parts of the season. It's about how society's impositions on individuals can lead them to grow obsessed with their career, to lose focus on what actually matters, and hurt themselves in the process. By the way, this isn't my personal interpretation of the story. As Mrs. Hisrick puts it, she's trying to fill a void in herself that can't be filled by being powerful. And you know what? On paper, I think these ideas are fine. Is it remotely how I saw Yen in the books? God, no. But at least it's an original interpretation of the character, viewing her through a different lens of societal issues than the original text. The problem is the writers didn't do a very good job at putting forward these ideas. Because of their plot-driven mentality, a lot of the elements taken from the books clash with the character they are establishing, contradicting each other from scene to scene, framing events in ways that simply don't match what we're shown. Because showing she's angry she had to change in order to fit in, only to be dissatisfied with that also, could have worked. I quite like the idea that she still sees herself as the hunchback girl she once was. It's realistic, showing the years of abuse and ableist rhetoric had a heavy toll on her self-esteem. But the problem is the plotline they wrote for Yennefer places her in a mental space that's completely different from her book counterpart. But at the same time, the show is adapting the storyline of the books. And it doesn't work because her motivations and personality no longer make sense for Subkoski's story. You see, the writers felt a need to introduce conflict into Yennefer's storyline. I wanted to start with all of the messy stuff that she has before she has her transformation. I just really wanted to kind of trouble that character a little bit. And in order to achieve that, they had to put her at odds with the school of Aratusa. They turned Aratusa into the source of almost every single hardship in Yennefer's life. From her experiencing prejudice due to her elven blood, to her losing her ability to bear children, it all comes from Aratusa, and thus, metaphorically, the establishment. Now, in season one, all of these characters are sort of fighting, um, fighting against other forces, you know, forces from beyond them. Whereas in the books, Aratusa served as an alternative to the establishment, one that allowed women to help each other overcome society's prejudices and taught Yen that she didn't need to be concerned with what the world and the reader expected of her, Magical rejects in the shape of the fairer sex seemed to be more difficult to place. Although expelled, the young ladies had nonetheless crossed the threshold of a school of magic. They were provided with a safe haven. They joined the judiciary. They became lawyers. Here, the mages represent just as much a patriarchal organization as the kings and queens they claim to oppose. I took away her control, but she still has power. Sometimes the best thing a flower can do for us is die. Her story frames her as overcoming the corrupt system and using her power to stand up to the unfair institutions that stole much agency in her life. But that doesn't ever mesh with the character, because Book Yen never hated the system. She was fully aware that Aratusa and Magic had vastly improved her life and as a result was grateful for both. She was conscious that her losing the ability to bear children was vastly outweighed by the power and beauty that came with Magic. So changing Aratusa from this place Yennefer appreciates into the main antagonist of her storyline completely transforms the character and her motivations at their core. Yet the writers constantly try to bring her back in line with the book counterpart despite all these fundamental changes, meaning her characterization and motivations are shaky at best and hypocritical at worst. Here's what I mean. The show changed her inability to bear children from a natural occurrence resulting from the usage of magic to a hysterectomy necessary for her ascension ritual imposed by Aratusa. They explicitly added rules of equivalent exchange in order to limit the power magic has in this universe. What we didn't want to do is have a show where our characters could perform magic to get in or out of any tricky situation. There's no sort of drama there. And that means without the hysterectomy, she couldn't be beautiful. To be reborn. You will bear no more. So if she wants children, she should be willing to let that go. Which we know is not the case. It's not like she wants to go back to her old life, that she would trade her beauty in order to have a child. Whenever we see her dreams of being a mother, she's still beautiful. So she doesn't actually want to go back to who she was. All she wants is more out of her already improved life. As she puts it, I want everything! And that makes moments where Yennefer claims she opposes Aratusa, such as this one. The ability to create life, they take that from you. But you don't have to do it. Feel completely hollow. 
The show wants this scene to show how she takes a stand against the system, but what is really happening here is Yennefer is trying to get these students to oppose Aretuza and thus give up their chance at beauty and power while she reaps all its benefits. She wants to see the system fail, but is unwilling to sacrifice anything that same system gave her, instead trying to get others to do the hard work for her. She never takes a step back and wishes she hadn't gained power and beauty from Aretuza, and thus never rejects their ways. They tied her beauty to her ability to bear children to add drama where there was none in the books, and it only does a disservice to the character they wrote for the show, because rather than have her be a cautionary tale of losing sight of one's desires and falling prey to empty promises made by the elite, it makes her a hypocrite who constantly plays the victim. She became a member of the elite, took what she could from them, and then accused them of ruining her life. She's compliant, enabling the system she claims wronged her. When she says, Maybe it is time for something different. Pipe down. You, you don't get a vote. If I did, I'd vote to burn it all down. It's just hollow threats. She never acts on that, never takes a stand and makes any efforts to actually change the inner workings of the school, instead only acting with self-centered complacency. It sounds like somebody has the case of likes to use fringe politics to make themselves feel special, but doesn't actually ever want to do anything. Hell, she's upset when less talented witches are accepted at the school because it reflects poorly on her position as a sorceress. Look at this place. It's a joke. Letting in girls who can't even do magic. Just because you fucked it up doesn't mean we will. You! Come on. With all the magical talent of shoe leather. She doesn't want Aratuza to be a less elitist institution, doesn't want to see others benefit from a magical education like she did. Her numerous claims that she wants to see the system abolished ultimately ring hollow because despite all her complaints, at her core, she believes people born with magical talent deserve special treatment. And this disconnect in the character's behavior and how the show treats her is due to the new direction they took the character in, which doesn't mesh with the book version. They decided to write Yennefer an origin story in order to focus on plot over characters. You know, one of the first things that I wanted to do is um, there's a lot of backstories of characters that are revealed uh, through little lines of dialogue. And I thought, well, rather than be told that story, I want to see that story. But then, when creating it, it's not so much that the showrunners tried to slowly put into place elements that built her towards the character we know and love from the source material. Instead, they built their own original character with her own characteristics, worldview, and behaviors, only to suddenly realize she had nothing in common with Book Yen. As Anya Charlotte has explained, I started reading them when I got the part, and as I was um, filming, I found it really difficult to carry on reading whilst I was reading the script. She literally can't read the source material because the character she plays is so off base. Book Yen is described as grateful for magic and what it has given her, but for the show, they wrote a sob story that made it impossible for Yennefer to learn to appreciate Aratuza as she did in the source material. And instead of committing to that, they just had her enjoy the benefits of magic anyways, creating these clashes in the character's behavior. Yennefer thought becoming a witch would give her the love she craves, which it didn't, and that frustrates her. It's magic. It's not real. Fine. But she also no longer experiences the abuse and mockery of others. People look at you for who you are, not for what you can give them. To say it conferred her a great deal of privilege as a result of her position as a sorceress, just like her book counterpart. Yet Yennefer never seems to acknowledge this, instead emphasizing what they took from her rather than what they gave her. Aratuza essentially gave her a scholarship and offered her surgery to help her in the world. Yet not once are these perks framed as positives because the school is supposed to be the villain. To add plot in a story that doesn't need it, the show treats Yennefer's pain as if she's the martyr of a bad system, when really she's one of the lucky ones. The problem is they fundamentally rewrote Yennefer's background as someone who doesn't fit the system and even stands up to it. But at her core, in the books and the games and the show, Yen is someone who has gained a huge amount and profited a lot from the system. Clearly capitalizing on the political situation here. I'm serving the stifled people of this town. It's fine to fly in the face of overzealous authority, but to pretend it's anything other than making a profit. So the show's interpretation of the character clashes with the book counterpart, leaving her in this weird middle ground where she can never side with Aratusa, but can never take a meaningful stand against the school either. Her story winds up not being about fighting the corrupt establishment, but instead about how she can use it to her advantage. She becomes this weird ideal of using the system's flaws against itself, rather than actually fixing those flaws, which makes for a deeply unpleasant character. I gave you all I could give. What more do you want? Everything. 
It's convenient the show never actually pitches Yennefer against someone with an incurable disability, because otherwise, her self-absorbed nature would become apparent. Her attitude is never put into perspective, the suffering of others never truly considered. Would you rather go through the process of becoming a witcher or a sorceress? Witcher. Why yeah. would you want to be a witcher? Could... No, I wouldn't yes. want to be a witcher. It's the process of a witcher. Nine out of ten of them die. And look, I do get that season two is supposed to address this. I get that there she loses her powers and realizes how much they actually mean to her. Through her loss, she comes to accept that being a sorceress is who she is and sees how much Aratus actually added to her life. From the moment we met, you have been trying to fill a void. Power couldn't do it even when you had it at your fingertips. What makes you think it's the answer now? Because it's all I have left! This season is the one that's supposed to see her come to terms with her flaws, as she realizes she was responsible for the decisions she made, and that Aratusa is not to blame for that. A narc that started at the end of season one. You saved me. I never forget that. Compare her dialogue in season one. You should join us. Did you hear a word I just said? Why would I protect this? Child. They took my choice. I want it back. To that in season two. The North has won. Mm. Join us. You're weak at Aratusa, but at least you still had your own mind. That implies choice. I was placed in a kingdom at the whim of the Brotherhood's wants. We all were. We weren't forced to do anything. And it's almost complete opposites. The character growth here is obvious. But ultimately, it's all for nothing since season two sees her go back to hating Aratusa. Even when she's supposed to learn to appreciate what it gave her, she's still at odds with them. They steal the credit for her work at Sada and ostracize her for her elven origins, and the system she is drawing from is still framed as the source of all the hardship in her life, one she must stand up to. They literally made her start appreciating Aratusa's contribution to her life for no other reason than to have them betray her again. And they've already set up a similar betrayal in Season 3. As Netflix's official synopsis puts it, entrusted with Ciri's magical training, Yennefer leads them to the protected fortress of Aratusa, where she hopes to discover more about the girl's untapped powers. Instead, they discover they've landed in a battlefield of political corruption, dark magic, and treachery. Every season, Yennefer goes in trusting Aratusa, only for them to screw her over. It's not character development, it's a seasonal character reset that makes her repeatedly come off as a gullible idiot. The issue comes from the fact that they took one of her most important moments of character change from the books, that is, learning to hate the Lodge of Sorceresses, but introduced it far too early. Yennefer only started hating Aratusa in Baptism of Fire, the fifth book of the series, and only had that shift of perspective because they were trying to take her daughter Ciri away from her. There was a reason for her to feel betrayed, but in the show, the writers introduced that idea immediately in season one before she'd even met Ciri. So from the very start, they'd already done her one major arc from the source material, and so now they're trapped in a loop of doing it over and over again and it loses more impact each time. When Yennefer denounces them for wanting to take Ciri in season 3 or 4, it will have zero impact since she's already denounced them several times before at this point for her own sake. Rather than embracing the good in a bad system before having that perspective flipped on its head, Yennefer knows it's evil from the very start, even though she owes them her life. Favorite place? I'd have to say the Tower of Gaul, because that's where she first meets Istrid, and that's her first piece of hope. Which means she just exploits a bad system to fulfill her selfish ambitions while claiming to be disgusted by how corrupt it all is. And it really hammers in how hypocritical she is. Her complete lack of introspection becomes all the more apparent when Yennefer claims to be an elf. I'm also an elf. I'm sorry, what? I've never seen so many elves. Her, a successful, independent woman who was educated in a private school and can basically get away with anything. Sure, she had some difficulties in her professional life due to her background, but to say it gave her the means to move forward in spite of this, to overcome society's boundaries, this is what matters here, that she was given the tools to fight the unjust system through her education. Yet despite that, all she ever does is complain, claiming her suffering is as bad as people who are literally trying to survive ethnic cleansing at the hands of humans. Rather than, you know, using the skills she learned to fix the problems, this scene is literally a privileged girl claiming to be one quarter minority means she understands their pain, even though she has never interacted with that side of her family. This could have been a great moment of comeuppance and personal growth as Yennefer's hypocrisy got called out. The show even points it out. Have you ever shed a tear over anything, Alvin? 
You are no elf. But ultimately, this scene doesn't change her, making it all pointless. Within the episode, Yennefer just leaves, not trying to help these people, in a way demonstrating she has no affinity for the elves. What did you ask for? An end to these nonsense. To live as ever. Instead of realizing how fortunate she is, how perhaps she could help share with others the opportunities to say it gave her, demonstrating, oh, I don't know, her maternal instincts the show keeps claiming she has, she remains selfish in her actions. And if we assume she does indeed see herself as an elf, then it means she's a self-centered sociopath who doesn't care to help anyone but herself. If not, she used the suffering of the less fortunate to make herself seem more special than she is. And I'm not sure which one is worse. Once again, the book and show versions are clashing, damaging the character. Her elven origins were completely irrelevant in the books. She didn't care for the elves and never even interacted with them. So when the show wants us to believe she has some sort of connection with their people, it won't work because the story is never going to be able to explore that facet of the character. As long as they keep trying to be true to the books, any moment she spends with the elves will just be filler between the scenes actually taken from the source material and will never have any real impact on her character, making them worthless. And all of this makes Yennefer a far less compelling character, because now she has to constantly be in denial to even justify her hypocritical characterization. She never takes responsibility for her actions. Instead, she chastises everyone but herself for a choice she made. There was something very powerful. Uh, to us about the sterilization not being forced on Yennefer. You knew the cost of enchantment. But I didn't know what it would mean to me. Try they it. took my choice. I want it back. I didn't have much of a choice either. Yeah, it was a bad choice between remaining excluded from society or selling her soul, and yes, she might be in denial, but she explicitly made that choice and never regretted its perks, only regretted losing something in the process. At some point, she needs to come to terms with that. But instead, she only feeds her selfish ambitions under the guise of victimhood. I mean, hell, one of her defining moments in the show is her complaining about how miserable she is to a dead baby, which really shows how she has zero self-awareness. The writers are hiding behind the she's in denial excuse to justify how the storylines they wrote for the show clash with the character she was in the books, which is quite simply a failure in terms of adaptation. The problem isn't that they changed her background, I'm open to new interpretations. No, the problem is they changed it, but then tried to apply the stories and decisions she made in the books, even though they no longer made sense here. For their radical interpretation of the character to work, the writers needed to also radically retool her story, but didn't, probably out of fear of getting called a bad adaptation, which the show wound up being anyways. As is, she complains about a choice she willingly made as she angrily bemoans being forced into a life she refuses to give up or even share. So the story they wrote doesn't reinforce the arc of rejecting the system to forge her own path to happiness. In fact, it undermines the theme since she's complicit to the system. I moved my way up through the system um, and it gave me the best possible education. I mean, I think that's what I can sort of lean back on as a showrunner. Huh. Either way, I find this all completely despicable. It means that the depiction of her as a monster before turning beautiful is not insight into her self-hatred, but instead a genuine statement on how the creators see someone with a disability. They see it as something that needs to be fixed at all costs in order to achieve your true potential. And what is most important to her in this moment is being powerful. And in the world of The Witcher, she must be beautiful. She must be able to sway kings and queens with her beauty. And that was her choice. That was what was most important to her. She chooses beauty and power, regrets what she lost, but not the actual change. In the show's eyes, it was worth temporarily becoming a part of the villainous system and letting herself be corrupted in order to cure her ailment. The problem is made all the more obvious by the show's adaptation of The Last Wish. In the books, Geralt finds himself obsessing over Yennefer, trying to figure out what her ailment was before becoming beautiful. It's only at the very end, when all seems lost, that he realizes she was once hunchbacked, and in that moment, he sees her for who she really is. Once he understands who she was and how she suffered and overcame her issues, that is when Geralt falls in love with her, not before. Her cold penetrating, angry and wise eyes, were those of a hunchback. He was horrified, no, not of the truth. He was horrified that she would read his thoughts, find out what he had guessed. Geralt loves every aspect of who Yen is, not just the surface level. In the show, all we get is this line. But Aratusa fixed you up nicely. What was your ailment before? 
Clubbed foot. Split ends. Geralt seems more mocking than anything, and he never actually learns where she came from, who she is deep down. It makes their bond seem completely bogus based on nothing but superficial beauty. Seriously, two seasons in and Istrid's love for Yennefer seems much more honest than Geralt's, which is not how this should be going. He really is one of her first loves, and it was really important for us that Istrid met Yennefer as the young, scared, but yet really strong hunchback character. Similarly, in season 2, Yennefer sees a vision of herself as a child, only she's no longer hunchbacked, which is honestly just confusing. Season 1 established Yennefer still sees herself as the hunchback girl. This is not Yennefer, this was never Yennefer, so why are we acting like this is who she always was? Ultimately, it really does feel like the show is making a statement on how disability is better left forgotten, rather than exploring how one can come to terms with themselves, which is kind of horrifying. Remember that scared girl who tumbled at your feet in this cave? Totally unaware of her power. I want to go back home to Adrian and never be her again. As she's written, Yennefer is an ableist nightmare, insinuating that someone with a disability is less likely to be successful than someone beautiful. And there is sadly some truth to that, but the fact that the show never acknowledges the incredible opportunity offered to Yennefer, instead always framing the system that cured her disability as the antagonist, really muddles that point. And all this is made worse by the fact that she's not an active party in her transformation. She's passive. I am the final artist. All this entitlement and denunciation of the system. And the truth is, she never actually put in any work. The only reason her transformation is intense is because she refuses to be administered an anesthetic. I need time to prepare the herbs. That won't be necessary. Don't be foolish. You can't be awake during the procedure. I can. Otherwise, this scene would just be Yennefer sitting in a chair naked while others operate on her to fix her back. To say an Aratusa performed the magic to make her beautiful, not her, which makes her conceit and insistent that life owes her anything all the more insulting. She put little to no effort into bettering herself. All she did was passively let Aratusa do to her what they wanted because she wanted to take from them what she could. The only active part she played in the scene was explicitly choosing to undergo the operation, and that gets thrown out the window because she goes on to blame others for that decision. I didn't have much of a choice. Hysteric has stated they didn't want to make her a victim. There was something very powerful uh, to us about the sterilization not being forced on Yennefer. Child. They took my choice. I want it back. Then why does she act like a victim? How they've envisioned this character is blatantly not how she's been characterized. Because in the show, she is a victim. They even say so themselves. You can free the victim in the mirror forever. If they had changed Yennefer's story to empower her as her pain came from decisions she made and had to take responsibility for, it could have been fine, a pretty great idea in fact. But instead, they made her key characteristic the fact that she doesn't take responsibility for her decisions, as others are blamed for her misery. Because it's clear the only way the showrunners could think to empower her character was to have her be a victim who stood up to those who hurt her. Like they've so often repeated in marketing, she's someone who survives. She is the ultimate survivor. But just because she fights back doesn't make her any less of a victim. And ultimately, this version of the character is far less empowering than the book counterpart. She looks the way she does because society expects that, not because she wants to. One of the first things that we talked about is, why would Yennefer want to be beautiful? Could we actually portray a woman who is kind of questioning this transformation? She acts the way she does because it's what she was taught, not because of who she is. That's exactly why you're here, exactly what she taught you. Everyone's a poor. She's made the choices she made because she had to, not because she chose to. I didn't have much of a choice either. And the only part she did have an active role in gets ignored to highlight how unfair this all is. They rewrote her backstory so that she would have to deal with the consequences of her actions, only for her to never take responsibility for those actions and instead be presented as a martyr. You say I never took responsibility for the way my life turned out. What about you? So the changes they made to her narrative are moot, and not only unnecessary, they're flat out bad. They took a character that served as a big fuck you to the expectations of men and society, and turned her into one who bent to those expectations and then blamed everyone else for her giving in. And it muddles Yennefer's narrative, placing her in a stasis where she keeps rubber banding back and forth between accepting and hating Aratusa's system. 
In the books, none of this flimsy martyrdom complex was present because Yen was the one who worked long and hard to overcome her disability. She wasn't born with natural gifts, she just took pride in her beauty because she earned it through her studies and her hard work. No one is born a wizard. We still know too little about genetics and the mechanisms of heredity. Compare that to the show where her power is innate due to her elven blood. She has elven blood in her and actually becomes one of the most powerful mages on the continent. Magic is... It comes to people in different ways, depending on where it's inherited from. How did, how did you do that on your first try? My real father... He was half-elf. And you can see why the character falls apart. In the books, due to her procuring her power through great effort, she took joy in life, enjoying the pleasures it offered. She wanted a child in an effort to experience even more of life, not for self-obsessed reasons such as making herself feel loved or have a legacy. A core theme of the books was nature versus nurture. A monster can be raised to be kind, a mutant supposedly stripped of emotions can still care, and an infertile sorceress can still find a way to have a child through adoption. This is why I love Yen in the books, because she fought against her nature, and would overcome it time and time again through hard work. Sure, she may be selfish, vindictive, or even depressed, but she always fought against that part of herself to become better. She always sought more in life, not because she thought she deserved what she wanted, but because she knew she could earn it. It was that dichotomy of how little Yen believed she deserved happiness versus how much she worked for it that made her such a great character. Yen is someone who knew what she wanted and would stop at nothing to get it. And it made for this incredibly uplifting story that yes, you really can overcome your issues if you put your mind to it. Every day it gets a little easier. Yeah? But you gotta do it every day. That's the hard part. But it does get easier. She wasn't effortlessly powerful and confident, she was powerful and confident through great effort. She put in the work to overcome her depression because she didn't want to be defined by that and wanted to be better. But in the show, Yennefer loses all these beautiful qualities. Because her talent for magic is innate due to her elven blood, it means she puts little to no work into herself. Her story is not about putting in hard work to become better, but instead about how unfair the world is to this brilliant girl and how it's time she gets her due. Seen and adored with everyone watching. It is what I'm owed. I deserve to survive. I've earned it. I deserve access to chaos. To get back what I had. <laughs> what I deserve. It's why the showrunners made it so she was the only sorceress with a visible disability before her transformation, as opposed to the books that made it clear they all went through similarly impactful changes. Only daughters with no chance of finding a husband became sorceresses. If the child passed the first years of training, magic entered into the equation, straightening and evening out legs, repairing bones which had badly knitted, patching hair lips, removing scars, birthmarks and pox scars because it makes Yennefer seem more special, as her childhood was so much rougher than the others. And it reframes all her behavior. It's not about her earning happiness, but about how happiness is owed to her, about how good things will come to her regardless of what she does because she deserves that respite. It's interesting to see what happens to her character when she thinks she's made all the wrong choices, because I think we kind of know that she's on the path that she's meant to be on. They rewrote Yennefer from someone who knew and worked towards what she wanted into the very opposite. As Lauren Hisrick has stated, her arc is about her figuring out what she feels her life is lacking. That missing piece that she knows will bring her the happiness she so desires, but can't quite put her finger on what it is. As Hisrick puts it, if one piece of the puzzle of life is missing, nothing feels good. It's when all those pieces are properly in place that a person can truly shine. And that's what Yennefer is getting at this season. Hisrig's version of Yennefer doesn't know what she wants, and it makes for a very dull character, as she can never actually work towards her goals. Instead, the writers rely yet again on destiny to get her there, as she accidentally stumbles her way into being Ciri's mother figure, and explains why before that meeting, Yennefer remains a miserable character defined by her sadness above all else. Yennefer's actions are all random bits for happiness with no real reasoning behind them. She just coasts through life, finding no joy in anything. 
and yet Charlotte's performance never lands for me because she only ever plays Yennefer as bored and passionless. She's at the mercy of others as she desperately craves the love of Istrid, which is really weird when the books had that dynamic completely the other way around. Ultimately, she's far more defined by her self-pity than any other trait. She chooses to keep her scars from her suicide attempt, thereby allowing that period of difficulty and depression define who she is, rather than moving on and coming into her own. Leave my eyes. These as well. Instead of having her join the Battle of Sodden Hill out of a sense of duty, they reframe her actions there as her, at least on some level, wanting to see her life end. So are you ready to die? Yes. It's time to accept that life has no more to give. Instead of letting her take action in order to prove to herself she can always reach greater heights, the show constantly limits her to her internal sadness, trapping her in that pain, never allowing her to move past commiserating her existence. Because her story is not about looking to overcome nature, but about how unfair nature can be. Just compare this lesson of self-improvement she teaches Siri in the books. Just no tears, Siri. There's no sight more nauseating than a magician crying. Nothing arouses greater pity. To her behavior in the show... Tell me how to save myself! <laughs> and my contempt for this version of the character should be easy to understand. She's not a driven individual working towards her goals. She's a complacent one that complains at every hurdle. Ultimately, this is why I hate the show's version of the character. I don't respect the character who's handed everything she could want and then throws a hissy fit when she changes her mind literally decades later while still enjoying the spoils of her new life. I don't appreciate a character that wants a child for the sole purpose of boosting her self-worth rather than because she wants to share her love for the world with them. And I don't admire a character who was destined for greatness and as a result never learned to appreciate life. At the end of the day, for all her complaining about being denied a choice, what is the different lifestyle Yennefer yearns so much for? What is the alternative that was taken from her? For the character to work, we need to understand what she wishes she could have been. But all we ever see is her pining to be a mother, to be loved unconditionally, and nothing else. She has no drives beyond that, really. No goals she strives to achieve. She berates everyone for denying her a life she wanted, but we don't even know what that life is. It really shows how one note this supposedly expanded version of the character actually is, as they boil down her entire motivation to her ovaries, which is incredibly reductive for your female lead. This is made worse by how the cast is constantly paraded nude in front of the camera for the sake of cheap TNA to keep the audience's attention. Oh sure, it might be about her pride and her body, but I'm just saying, it's kind of weird that the showrunner who said, I've always said that if someone has to be having sex behind you to make the scene interesting, then I'm not doing my job. Let a scene play out like this, even though it didn't in the books. And what's most baffling about these problems, they all stem from them trying to transform Yennefer into something she's not. They took the story of a woman who worked hard and was thankful for the education that emancipated her, and turned her into someone whose talent was her natural birthright, and hated the educators who limited her horizons. They clearly wanted this theme of standing up to authority, of rebelling against the establishment to be introduced in this show, probably because it's something that speaks a lot to teenagers and young adults, their core demographic. But if it absolutely needed to be here, why not just make that series plotline? These are the themes of her story. She's born a princess, which comes with a lot of predefined societal expectations, but is then revealed to have special powers, leading to the fate of the entire continent revolving around her. All the villains, whether it be Vilgefortz, Emir, or the Wild Hunt, try to decide her future for her, attempting to take her choice of what to do with her body away, and all this leads her to rebel against those expectations by forging her own path as a witcher. The source material already had a character who fit these themes and ideas. The showrunners didn't need to invent a whole bunch of nonsense to inject into the story, but they still decided to completely change Yennefer's nature so she could get this type of arc, and it means she's lost everything that made her unique, while Ciri's role is also greatly diluted. But this is a problem all throughout. The show continuously tries to make Yennefer seem more important than she is, claiming she is to become the most powerful sorceress ever. Imagine the most powerful woman in the world. She is stunning. She said you're the best student she ever taught. Even though that doesn't even match with what we're shown. You take weeks to lift your stone. You can't bend water. You struggle to perform the simplest physical tasks. 
and now you lie to me? So instead, to achieve this, they place her as one of the core reasons Nilfgaard started their invasion of the north. Down south, Frindilla's thrived in the post that should have been yours. Perhaps if Nilfgaard's religious zeal had been tempered earlier by a stronger hand. To be fair, Yennefer of Vengerberg is the one that I have to thank for my posting. If she'd taken it, I wouldn't be where I am today. Neither would Nilfgaard. I see what they're trying to do. They're trying to build this show as a Game of Thrones style epic, where seemingly unimportant plot points spiral out of control into giant political intrigue with our heroes at the center. But this is a fundamental misunderstanding of what Yennefer as a character, and even Witcher as a franchise, are about. Witcher is not an epic, it's a saga. What's the difference? Epics are about the larger picture, the big events and how mythical figures influence them. By comparison, a saga focuses on people and how those larger events influence them. The focuses are the complete opposite, and that's what made Witcher so unique. It was first and foremost focused on its characters and their relationships, not on the action and the narrative. The appeal of Yen is that yes, she is a badass witch, but at the same time she's not that special within the political sphere. She's not a particularly powerful sorceress. Philippa, Francesca, and Sheila are more powerful than her, and she's definitely not integral to the political intrigue of the continent. Even though she wasn't an outcast among witches, she stood out because she acted on a purely personal scale. She didn't influence or want power over nations, she wanted to find personal happiness. None of the main cast outside of Ciri were important in the grand scheme of the war. What can you know about saving the world, silly? You're but a witcher. This is my story, not yours. You must let me finish telling it. All these prophecies and large political shifts were out of Geralt and Yen's control, and they simply happened to be caught up in the turmoil. So when the show pits Yennefer as the most powerful being in the continent and the root cause of the war, it completely changes the point of the series and its characters. Now it's no longer the personal journey and struggles of a trio trying to be reunited and find happiness in a complicated world at war. It's instead about how these people are the most important people in the world, whose decisions impact the lives of everyone. Again, focusing on plot over characters. And by the way, I could say the exact same thing about Geralt. In the books, he was famous as he was part of a dying breed of monster hunters in a world where they were increasingly sparse. In the show, they conveniently wrote in magical monoliths that spawn in new monsters for him to fight so he can be the savior, which further distracts from the human side of the story. So the problem is not unique to Yennefer. And all this is counterintuitive. They added backstory to Yennefer so that we could understand her better on a personal level. But what they actually did is make her story less personal by trying to make her relevant to events she should not be concerned with. She's become such a vital part of this story, one who apparently has had as much bearing on the future of the continent as Ciri, that she loses what makes her relatable. And in the process, sabotages the show's depth. Because now every scene involving political intrigue has to revolve around her in some way. The only thing Sintra hates more than mages is... Elves. Yennefer's of elven blood. If only Yennefer had gone to Nilfgaard with her at the helm, they'd still be a shitty backwater. You want me to lay low? I need you to. Because you and Vilgefortz are making a play for their seats. Can you at least tell me what purpose my death serves now? Absolution. Mine. Mine. And the end result is we know nothing about the actual politics of the continent. For all the insistence on how the crucial the larger picture is to the show, we legitimately know nothing about it. What the various kingdoms are, the you know, sort of the political game that's being played, you know, in media race when we join, all of that had to be done to sort of understand the stakes of the series. Answer me this, what does Aratusa actually do in the political sphere, and what do the sorcerers actually want from the royal families outside of the vague idea of power? What kingdoms are they puppeteering, and why? We don't know, it's never stated. The sorcerers have no explicitly defined goals beyond maintaining a nil-defined status quo. Their only role is to be evil Machiavellian manipulators for Yennefer to stand up against. I guess giving her more moments to shine was more important than actually building a coherent world of political intrigue. 
The showrunners have gone at length explaining they wanted the characters to be active, not reactive. This was a conscious decision to make every character hold more weight in the grand scheme of the plot. But that's not what Witcher is. Witcher is not Game of Thrones. Witcher is not Lord of the Rings. Witcher is about a small-scale story caught up in larger-than-life worlds and events. The showrunners even say so themselves by repeatedly stating it's about family. So why are they distracting from the small-scale story by trying to make these characters more important? All it does is make the protagonist less relatable for the sake of a political intrigue you barely develop. You're sacrificing characters for plot and doing both badly. And it's all the more insulting when you realize that in order to make her role at Sodden Hill more meaningful, they have to make everyone else less competent, downplaying their roles. All the rules of magic they added in the show are made to make Yennefer seem more awesome. Creating fireballs causes lesser mages to melt, but Yennefer, she can channel that no problem. Fringilla needs special herbs to freeze people in place. And where else could I have learned the paralytic qualities of Nightshade? But Yennefer does it with a flick of the wrist. She is literally their secret weapon at Sodden Hill, because she is so gosh darn good at channeling chaos. Keep watch on the tower. The tower reserve your chaos. They give the book roles of both Vilgefortz as the savior of Sodden and Triss as the 14th of the hill over to Yennefer, even though it barely makes sense. And that all leads to her getting series loss of power plotline from Time of Contempt. That last one is particularly confusing since in the books, Yennefer was blinded after the battle. You could have just used that to frame her as vulnerable while also gaining points for representation of a disability, like the writers keep exclaiming is their goal. But no, we can't let her have her own plotline, and we can't allow someone with a disability to be active and awesome, which is ironic for a showrunner who wrote on Daredevil, by the way. In order to frame Yennefer as a hero, the writers are cannibalizing other characters so she can get moments to shine, because they're incapable of coming up with anything unique to her. It's an adaptation, so I'm fine with combining storylines of various characters to a single one in order to streamline the narrative. But if you do that, you gotta cut the characters you're stealing from. Otherwise, you are denying them any reason to exist. It creates this mess where the writers need to constantly create new storylines to fill the gaps they are creating, snowballing until the characters don't even resemble who they were originally. This is one of the many reasons this show can never be a remotely decent adaptation. Because Yennefer is undermining the existence of a good chunk of the supporting cast, damaging their depth and complexity, which is going to have severe repercussions on plot lines moving forward. Really, the issue with Yennefer in the show comes down to this simple fact. The writers are completely unwilling to ever have the character be in the wrong, probably because Hisrick relates to her too much to objectively judge her actions. I, I love Yennefer. Um, there's a lot of me in Yennefer, or a lot of Yennefer in me, I'm not sure. You are a hero to me and many others. You were incredible that day, Sodan. Geralt says you're the most powerful mage he's ever known. Imagine the most powerful woman in the world. She's stunning. Cringe. There's no other word for it. This makes me cringe. It's embarrassing. And it sucks because the elements for an interesting character were there. I do understand where show Yennefer is coming from. I understand she's traumatized. I understand how deeply ingrained self-hatred and paranoia born from years and years of abuse have led her to this point. Due to her emotional injuries and self-doubt, she convinces herself she can't be loved and thus should not attach herself to others. And as such, Yennefer increasingly uses others in a utilitarian fashion that pushes them away as she grows toxic in her aimless search for happiness. When she thinks power will bring it to her, she tries to kill Tissay out of sheer jealousy for her classmate's talent. She accepts her friends getting turned into eels. She insults her lover for prying secrets from her when she was doing the exact same thing. Then, she later thinks a child will bring her happiness. And when Geralt reaches out to her and points out her motives are selfish, she pushes him away, fearing their love might not actually be true. She repeatedly harms those around her in a desperate bid to protect herself. And this starting point for the character could work, because at its core, this show should be about overcoming trauma through our connections. Yeah, she, she presents such a harsh exterior, yes. and that's something that she she needs to reflect upon and um, and tap into the vulnerability, which actually makes her the most powerful mage out there. The show's entire arc for Yennefer is that her chaotic nature makes her a naturally powerful conduit for magic. But due to her internal turmoil, she can't harness her true power despite all her innate gifts. You lie. You keep secrets. You succumb to emotion. To weakness. 
If she learned to open herself to others more and find inner peace, she would become a better sorceress. I think what's different in this series is we look at her, the vulnerability which, which, which gives her that power. Vulnerable doesn't mean weak, it's, right. it's a strength. And that's a solid basis for a show, on one condition. This arc is entirely dependent on if the show forces Yennefer to atone for her behavior and actions, changing her ways in order to get back in touch with her softer side. And unfortunately, it really doesn't. The Yennefer the writers gave us doesn't fit that story. The show completely fails to demonstrate that her fears, her isolation, and her pain are all due to her inability to move past her emotional damage. Instead of ever showing any empathy, kindness, or motherly instinct that would fit the arc the writers are drawing for her, the show sees her project her pain onto those around her, spreading her trauma with no repercussions. The moments she interacts with children that show involve her failure to protect a baby she tried to kidnap, her drugging children for no other reason than she felt depressed, and her plotting to sacrifice a child to a demon witch. And yet I'm still supposed to root for her to get a child because it's the key to her emancipation from the system that ruined her life. What could you possibly want with a child? They took my choice. I want it back. When she pushes Istrid away, we're supposed to stand by her as he's part of that same system. A life holding dustpans while you brush off forgotten bones. That's not destiny. It's slow suicide. Not actually side with the man she selfishly manipulated to achieve her goals. I'm leaving for Sintra tomorrow. To help the elves who are migrating, to help people like Like me. How heroic. And she forces to say out of her life until the Rectoress admits to being wrong, putting Yennefer in a position that doesn't challenge her, but instead vindicates her hatred of Aratusa. You were right. In Rind. The show constantly sides with Yennefer, not actually forcing her to see the error in her ways. The show doesn't frame her individualistic attitude as the reason she's lonely. Instead, it's presented as empowering and her confrontational nature as personal resolve as she stands up to the corrupt institutions. A word of advice. Think for yourselves. It'll save you a lifetime of heartbreak. Her entire arc has been built around this fight against those in power, the fakes and mooches that leech off her talent, that try to infringe on her independence. You're afraid I'll be everything you could never be without you. Which is the rub. You only want me to do well so long as you had your hand in it. We're still just vessels. For them to take and take. You're born helpless, so you find strength, and then that's what they want you for, to use you. Perhaps you are not aware of the rules here. If you are casting spells, I need to collect what's due to the kingdom. I'm afraid those terms seem rather shite to me. Because the system is evil, and she must prove it is corrupt. It took five minutes for the lies to start. Why did I expect anything else from a place held together by bullshit? Her uncompromising vision and her unwavering faith in her talent are the qualities the show celebrates, as it insists she is right to live life by her rules. The chapter thinks you rash, unpredictable, and dangerous. But right now, that's exactly what Desai and I need. And I think that's the message of this season for Yennefer, is like, when everything is taken from you, you've got yourself. Like Hisrik has explained, her strength is in believing in herself and that she has a place in this world even though her family told her she didn't. Just look at how the fanbase has generally framed her as an ideal of empowerment, someone who lives life by her own rules and takes no shit from anyone. If the writers wanted audiences to question her actions and hope for her to change, they clearly fucked up. One need only look at her interactions with Geralt to see how the show vindicates her individualist attitude. In the books, when fighting the genie, she refuses Geralt's help, insisting he leaves to save his life as she deals with the consequences of her actions. Get out of here, she yelled, grimacing ominously. It's getting dangerous. I'll open my portal. I'll wait for you to escape. In the show, she refuses his help because it would mean she would be at the mercy of someone other than herself. You heroic protector! Dog, permitting my success so long as you command it yourself. Fuck off! And then when she learns Geralt wished their lives be tied together, in the books, she is touched, realizing that he acted selflessly for her, demonstrating that maybe someone could love her. I heard what you wished for. I was astounded. I don't know whether there's such a force in nature that could fulfill such a wish. But if there is, then you've condemned yourself to me. 
and that realization sets her on her journey of emotional growth. In the show, not only does she not immediately hear his wish, making her falling in love with Geralt seem more like a plot contrivance than the result of any sort of emotional growth, when she finally does learn about it, she sees it as an invasion on her freedom. It's magic. It's real, Yen. Yeah. How could we ever know? Disregard for others' freedom has become quite your trademark. Her opening up to Geralt and learning to trust him are not the objective of these episodes. It's about escaping the clutches of an unfair system that has always forced her life in directions she was unhappy with. It's about overcoming adversity as she reclaims her independence and proves all who doubted her wrong by living life her way. It's no accident that the show rewrote the antagonists of Nilfgaard, which were originally based on the Holy Roman Empire, as this communist nation built on religious fanaticism and community support. They look out for their people. Everybody gets something. You force mages into servitude. When in training, yes. Like soldiers. We believe in shared sacrifice. Because in the showrunner's eyes, that is the scariest thing in the world. A government structure that forces everyone at the same level and thus makes no one special. Sometimes boring is better. No, it's not. No, for God, take people down to their worst and give them something to cling to. This is what Yennefer is fighting in the show. The corrupt systems and institutions that attempt to hold her back in favor of the less talented. The people and institutions that take away her individualism. And look, I don't know if they meant to rewrite Yennefer this way. Maybe this was all some ill-conceived critique of her selfish mentality. It's true the characters point out how toxic she can be. Only you can be thrown a lifeline and think that you are saving me. But I don't think denunciation of her actions was the goal here, since her critics are proven to be wrong. You were right. In wind. When Yennefer is teaching this to Ciri, When you have power like this, never apologize. It kind of kills the notion that the writers view her behavior as problematic, or that she is trying to change for the sake of others. They focus so much on showing how Yennefer is right in her ways, and the system is wrong, that her story teaches us that standing by your beliefs is the truest evidence of strength. You can either be too strong to fail, or too weak to try. In the writer's eyes, her sacrificing her relationships for power is inherently tied to becoming the best version of herself. And the writers can't ever let her question her beliefs, as that would legitimize the system she hates. And as such, they frame the wall she's built as a result of her trauma as what makes her special. Her flaws are what make her the person she is, that is to say a badass witch, rather than what keep her from becoming what she could be, that is to say a caring parent. Anya, one of the things about Yennefer and her backstory is that she's had to build up so many walls around herself in a real protective way. But I was actually interested in the way in which you also play that as a strength to her. Yeah, I mean, in this world, you kind of can't trust anyone. Uh, I think everyone's, uh, you know, created walls around them um, to help them kind of face the brutality and the violence of this world. And it means the arc of self-improvement they set up for her will never get paid off because we're more focused on framing Yennefer as an intrepid trailblazer. You just need to look at the end of both seasons to see why that's a problem. Season one starts with Yennefer being taught she needs to learn to control her emotions. It is your job to control chaos, not to become it. I can. Only for that to be thrown by the wayside by the end of the season. Everything you have ever felt Everything you've buried. Forget the bottle. Let your chaos explode. Instead, at the end of season one, Yennefer saves the day by weaponizing her trauma in a burst of emotion to save Tiseya and have a legacy. In season two, Yennefer saves the day by weaponizing her trauma in a burst of emotion to save Ciri and have a legacy. It's just the same thing. Not only is it incredibly uninspired writing that shows how little the showrunners know what to do with her, but it also truly demonstrates how she isn't actually changing as a person. Her attitude is never challenged, as the trauma that governs her emotions is celebrated, presented as the solution to any conflict. But that fear, that insecurity, feeds this chaos, this magic that makes her incredibly powerful. This idea of letting pain and trauma define you, your actions, and your strength is also what she teaches Siri. Magic. It's lodged in you, like a spiked arrow. Wounds you. Deeply. But it's a strange sort of pain. Combined with... Bliss. 
which when you compare to the lessons of self-control and overcoming your trauma Yennefer taught Ciri in the books. You are going to show me what you see in your dreams, and you are going to be frightened. And then you will forget and master your fear. Just shows how pathetic Netflix's rendition of the character is. The show's interpretation never shows any growth. The problem is not that they made her unlikable, that's literally how she's meant to be. It's that they made her unlikable, and then framed all her character flaws resulting from her trauma as strengths rather than weaknesses she should overcome. She owns her sexuality and uses it to manipulate people and get what she wants. She's epic. The writers don't care about her internal emotional turmoil and its effect on others. It's about the practical struggle of finding her way in an unfair world that matters to them. Is, is she going to be rescued or will she rescue herself because she isn't a damsel in distress? She rescue herself and I think that's the message of this season. With how the show has framed her story of empowerment, she'll never improve because her selfish behavior is boiled down to it's a necessary evil. She is the ultimate survivor. And that makes her more powerful than any other mage with the same magical abilities. Again, Hisrik purposefully rewrote her character as someone who doesn't know what will bring her happiness. In the showrunner's eyes, her fatal flaw is her inability to figure out her desires, not her mistreatment of others. Which means she will never seek to make amends or better herself as a person. After I'd been burnt by that soldier, I was on the ground, screaming, and he walked by me. I'm so sorry. No, it's not that. We were all there to play a part. I remember thinking, if only one of us gets to live. So glad it's the end. This self-centered belief in her superiority is the moral of her narrative, not the aspect of her character she must overcome. When you have power like this, never apologize. Never mind that she never would have gone this far without the help of others. Never mind that this mindset leads her to hurt everyone who cares for her. By focusing on her quest for power, they allow her to embrace her worst qualities rather than actually forcing her to change her ways. Actually, Yennefer finds that the source of her power is in those insecurities. Which makes for a very dull plotline. Unlike what some misinformed viewers will claim, Yennefer in the show is not a Mary Sue because she does have weaknesses and makes mistakes, but she often feels like one because what the show sets up as her flaws, such as letting herself be governed by her trauma and her mistreatment of others, are not what the show actually has her working to overcome, that being the patriarchal institutions. And that doesn't make her a flawed character, it makes her a bad one. Ultimately, the show's definition of a strong, independent woman is a narcissistic sociopath. In the writer's eyes, Yennefer can justify any and all actions she does at the expense of others because the world has been unfair to her. The writers just want us to believe once she finds what she's looking for, she'll improve and become a better person. But nothing in her story supports that. When she shows the Aratusa students the locations her friends were turned into eels, there's no mention that that scene ended with her smiling, that she was happy to contribute to the problem. No, the scene is about how Aratusa gave her less than she was promised. Even if you do everything right, follow their rules, that's still no guarantee you'll get what you want. No regret or remorse for her participation in that process, just a self-centered desire for something different. Even her best actions in the show ultimately come back to self-interest. In season 1 she saves Day at Sodden Hill, in season 2 she frees Kahir, yet both of those are framed as her proving Aratuza was wrong about her. This is your legacy. Why save me? Don't flatter yourself. I'm saving me. She teaches Ciri magic not out of love, but in order to lead her to a demon witch to be sacrificed. When she starts caring for Ciri, it's out of a self-centered desire to be loved. When chaos left me, I never thought that I'd feel that spark, that life again, but Ciri, she radiates it. Basically, she takes on the role of Ciri's mother figure, not because it feels like the right thing to do, but because she gains something from it. And, to be fair, she does selflessly save Yaskir, which is probably the high point of her season 2 arc. Funnily enough, it's the only part of her storyline pulled from the books. And this brings about one of the most famous scenes in the books that we wanted to recreate in our series. But she still winds up leaving him to rot in jail alone in order to make a pact to gain her power back, something that didn't happen in the novel. And yes, I will also admit she does sacrifice herself to save Ciri, but that sacrifice seems meaningless when she doesn't suffer any long-term repercussions and in fact regains the power synonymous with her toxic behavior from it. So truly, all her best actions tie back to her empowerment and the selfish behavior that comes with it.
She never displays any of the underlying empathy or selflessness she had in the books, none of the qualities that made her a fantastic mother figure for Ciri and a worthy significant other for Geralt. She smiled at Ciri, and despite herself, despite her anger and annoyance, Ciri had to respond with a smile, because the Enchantress's smile was unexpectedly pleasant, friendly and sincere. And you must be his child surprise. And look, you can write selfish, the end justify the means style characters if that fits the story you're trying to tell. Viewers are more than happy to suspend disbelief and let a protagonist's immoral action slide if the story allows for it. But here, it is actively at odds with the idea Sapkowski's character embodied. The Witcher books are explicitly about how friends and families can help you heal. We are talking about a series that had Shard of Ice be the story of how Geralt and Yen were toxic for each other, not because they didn't love each other, but because they didn't know how to communicate their love. You promised to answer my questions. One remains. I'm incapable of it, Geralt, she said firmly. I don't believe you yet. Now you answer my question. I cannot yet. No, Geralt, she said. That's not the truth. We're talking about a series that spent the entirety of Blood of Elves showing how Ciri brought out the best in Yennefer, Geralt, and the Witches of Kaer Morhen. We're talking about a saga that had Baptism of Fire be the story of Geralt feeling depressed, insisting his two friends leave him alone, only for his group of friends to grow to a posse of five. This series is about how you are the best version of yourself when you're in a group. The communication and empathy are the key to self-improvement. So when the show barges in and introduces a version of Yennefer whose sole quality is her incorruptible belief in her value and her refusal to compromise her ways, of course it doesn't mesh. The show's version of the character can never work because the way they framed her story inherently means she can't grow as a character and is inherently at odds with the plot of the source material. This is what the showrunners don't get. Trauma can be the cause of behavior such as hers, but it should not be the justification for it. Now I'm telling my friend about how you killed that guy. It was for love. Cool motive, still murder. But with this show, the writers seem to be saying that if you're abused and excluded by society, you are justified in lashing out against everyone, including those reaching out to you. Which is not only a terrible message for the show, it's also the opposite of what Subkowski intended with the character. What I love so much about how he wrote Yen was that yes, she was powerful and intimidating, yet he also constantly emphasized how others could still help, how others can contribute to mending this imperfect world and the ideas it's built on. In a word, it felt inclusive. But this show tells us the opposite. Everyone must sit on the sidelines to let Yennefer do her thing because receiving any sort of outside help would underplay her accomplishments. She is willing to undergo anything, including a really painful transformation, in order to prove that she can do this on her own without anyone's help. I made that wish to save your life. I didn't need your help! We should accept Yennefer's search for happiness even when it comes at the expense of anyone else. And we shouldn't expect her to change because her trauma is what makes her special. And all I'm gonna say is that showing she's sad and lonely while doing all this is quite simply not enough to make her a relatable character. You can't keep doing this! You can't keep doing shitty things and then feel bad about yourself like that makes it okay! You need to be Better. This really explains why I feel so alienated by this frankly bad interpretation of the character. The way the showrunners wrote Yennefer as this ideal of the independent self-serving prodigy destined for greatness doesn't fit with the narrative of the books which are centered far more on empathy, personal growth, and collaborative healing. This is the problem with showing an origin story for her so early in the series. There is a reason she's introduced as cold, selfish, and scornful in the books. Only as the story progressed did we get to learn there was a lot more under the surface that recontextualized her personality and showed how much she was working to overcome her flaws. It was very effective in terms of making her a compelling character. Revealing her sob story immediately undermines her by having her painful origin be the most important aspect of who she is. Instead of this fascinating, strong, but flawed woman, the audience is presented with a victim, or as the showrunners and marketing like to call her, a survivor, to feel sorry for from the start. Survivor. Yennefer in the show is the underdog, which makes the audience root for her. It frames her as a hero, and viewers don't question her behavior because they want to see her succeed in her endeavors. This is all the more apparent by how the writers introduced her as this scared girl, letting audiences know from the start that deep down she is a good person. 
Thus, her journey of self-improvement gets pushed into the background until you forget that's what her story is even supposed to be about. This is in stark contrast to the books which started with her already at the top. Yennefer appeared to us as affluent and privileged, and her social status was never challenged, which made her worst traits all the more apparent. It got readers to want to see her course correct her ways because she had nowhere else to go. She'd achieved everything one could desire, from beauty to power to influence. All that was left for her was to look inwards at her internal and emotional struggles. The books brought the focus on the character and her personality, unlike the show that is obsessed with her conflict with outside forces. And this shift in focus from her internal struggles to her outwards ones has completely transformed how audiences view her character and her plot. Where in the books we thought, wow, I'm amazed by how confident and awe-inspiring a witch Yen is, in the show all we can ever think is, wow, I'm amazed she became so confident and awe-inspiring despite her difficult origins. It might seem like a meaningless nuance, but it really makes all the difference in the world. In the source material, she put forward a pragmatic facade, but had vulnerabilities and a playfulness to her. She was troubled without ever being tortured. She was cynical, but also empathetic towards others. She was guarded, but enjoyed the company of those who earned her trust. Basically, she was a well-rounded character that you felt had hundreds of years of experiences behind her, both good and bad. In the show, the focus on her origin and her journey to greatness means she has been stripped of all that depth. Her actions always come back to her sad backstory. She has to become this one-note emotional mess to drive her martyr's narrative, and has to stubbornly be in conflict with everyone to emphasize her independence, which makes her come off more as a spoiled teenager than anything else. Arturius can feel his grasp on the leadership slipping and Stregobor is... A fuckhead. They've boiled her down to the facade she projected in the books, rather than giving us the complex and compelling character she used to be. So yeah, she definitely has become the Yennefer we know and love from the books. You know, that's kind of cold-hearted, stony-faced woman who can take on anything. The showrunners made their version of the character this way to elicit pity, fishing for basic empathy. And what that means is that rather than actually build a strong character, they just gave us a hollow power fantasy. And as a woman, I have to say, it's this pure fantasy moment of seeing everything that you've been working for come to fruition. And it looks beautiful. Yennefer's journey is about having her be a queen to cheer on as she confronts the world more than it is about actually exploring the effects of trauma on people and how to overcome it, which completely undermines the arc of self-improvement she's supposed to be having. And you can just look at season 2 to see how poorly thought out her arc has been. That season is supposed to be her moment of realization on who she's become as she hits rock bottom and tries to make amends. Throughout the season, she needs to figure out how to survive in a world without her magic, and as a result shows a lot more empathy for others. But ultimately, these tweaks to her character fall flat because her final goal was sacrificing a child in order to regain her power. Her goal betrays who she really is at her core, a self-centered megalomaniac. Which makes sense. By this point in the show, we've seen Yennefer willingly sacrifice classmates, betray friends, backstab lovers in order to gain power. When Yaskir was dying, she was surprised Geralt would want to save him over fixing his insomnia. Fishing for a gin seems an extreme measure to remedy sleeplessness. I'm desperate. <laughs> and yet you didn't ask me to help with that. Leaving death kind of jumped the queue. I 100% buy this version of Yennefer would sacrifice a child to regain the one thing in life that gives her meaning. But the writers are trying to impose on her an arc far more in line with the book counterpart. That is to say that Ciri gives Yennefer a new life purpose. They want us to believe that her newfound love for this girl will see Yennefer willingly give up power for her sake. Ciri really changes Yennefer. We see that definitely at the end of this season. And she's never kind of hesitated before now to kind of get what she wants. And then when she's with Ciri, she just wants to save her. And that could work, if not for the fact that the two of them literally only spend one episode together. Her and Ciri share less screen time than bloody Fringilla and Francesca, so this entire shift in character is completely out of left field and goes against everything the show has established about her nature. In order to bring her plot more in line with the books, the writers simply ignore the past they've written for her and have everything resolved thanks to the power of love. Our hate is the pain she needs to grow stronger. Let's not give her what she wants. Making for a terrible arc. After two seasons of toxicity, her redemption and moment of comeuppance is summed up by this one line. I was stupid and I was selfish. That's it. Once again, 
the writers underplay the gravity of her actions. I mean, hell, she was going to give away Siri for profit. You'd think the show might draw some parallels between how her dad sold her off as a child. But no, they literally try to put her attempting to sacrifice a child on the same level as Geralt snapping at Yaskir out of frustration. Look, people do stupid things when they think they're trapped in a corner, Geralt. And they say stupid things. And that's what friends do. The show only ever musters up excuses for her actions, meaning she will never actually take responsibility for them and will never actually need to change. We're supposed to applaud how strong-willed she is because she didn't go through with it and was willing to put her life on the line. You're hopeless and she plunges her finger into it. It makes it hurt so badly you'd do anything. Like sacrificing an innocent child. Yes, except I couldn't do it. But honestly, Nothing in her behavior states she wouldn't have gone through with it had Ciri not read her mind and seen the betrayal approaching. And she regains her powers back anyways, for some reason I still don't understand. So no, I'm not gonna celebrate Yennefer's decision when she got everything she wanted at the cost of the life of dozens of people. And sure, Geralt and Ciri are a little angry at her, but do you for a moment believe that's gonna stick after everything else we've witnessed? Because I certainly don't. Hell, it was pretty much already resolved when you go from this in episode 7 How could you do this? to this in the next. Use your knowledge of magic to train the girl. Us three will help each other. What is destined cannot be avoided. And it shouldn't be. Rather than write compelling character arcs that naturally unfold, Destiny is used to push the plot forward to where the books were at by this point. They aren't changing the story to further develop the characters, they're just fundamentally altering their dynamics, then ignoring those changes to bring the narrative back in line with the source material, which makes for both a bad adaptation and a bad original story. And sure, now that Yennefer has finally met Ciri, maybe we can finally move past all this power struggle to focus on the emotional one. But it will never really feel earned, and I doubt it will happen. Because guess what? Yen is not present in most of the books outside of Time of Contempt. She spends Baptism of Fire as a statue, Tower of Swallows is mostly her on the run from the Lodge in Skellige, and in Lady of the Lake she's a prisoner of Vilgefortz. As much as I love her character, she is a secondary character. It's probably why I loved her so much. She always left you wanting more, but to make her a lead, the showrunners are going to have to constantly invent new material to give her something to do. And to put it bluntly, I don't trust them to do right by Sapkowski's character after two seasons of this writing. When I said Yennefer was my favorite character in all fiction, I meant it. She is someone I relate to on so many levels it is genuinely difficult for me to write about. I love how she worked hard to find her place and rise through society, how she fought against her nature and never wanted to let her worst define her, how she embraced the good in this imperfect life and learned from both her mistakes and from others how to better herself but the show managed to give me the opposite on every single level. A character who was destined for greatness through no efforts of her own, who embraced her worst traits as her strength and refuses to change her ways for the sake of anyone because the world is cruel and unfair. I saw myself in Sapkowski's character. The show's rendition of her embodies many of the traits I hate the most in a person. And even as its own thing separate from the source material, the character arc written for Yennefer is at best weak and at worst deeply problematic. The showrunner's focus on plot over characters meant they gave us an origin story focused on her quest for power. Because of that, the show can't focus on her emotional journey we're supposed to be adapting. The additional plots they introduced only distracted from the point the original novels were making, and it just leaves us with this conflicting characterization that muddles her entire arc by giving off mixed messages and unconvincing drama. Yen's strength as a character came from the fact that under her harsh exterior, she was actually a big softie, just like Geralt. You know, prickly on the outside like a gooseberry, but sweet on the inside like lilac. It's how she was conceived down to the perfume she wore. But the show never gives us that depth, instead vindicating her worst traits as if they are her best, which allows the writers to introduce conflict and drama in the show with zero long-term repercussions. Perfect for a long-running series. Never mind it undermines the morals of the source material. And the misunderstanding of the character goes down to her wardrobe. In the books, her choice of using only black and white clothes was also a reflection of her personality. Cold and dark on the outside, light and pleasant on the inside. In the show, she'll wear any color she wants because they don't understand what makes Yennefer work. Black, white, grey, purple, gold, anything goes. My favourite outfit of Yennefer's, there was a cape. There was a cape that I actually didn't wear much, but it was brown. <laughs> it was gorgeous. <laughs> Ha ha ha!
Are you serious? They just wanted to make a cool dress, regardless of if it fit the character or the setting. Yennefer is just there so the writers can make dramatic and empowering scenes with no actual proper work put into symbolism or logic in the plot. Which brings me to... 